Butler, so I think we're kind of set for that. He comes with a great deal of experience. He was born in New York, New Jersey, attended Grammar High School there, had a scholarship to New York School of Fine and then Industrial Arts. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's way too important. I'm going to leave it on the side. But he began working as an illustrator and fine artist, entering paintings and exhibits and awards. Um, he had his first solo exhibit in the Bayhead Cultural Center in Bayhead, New Jersey. And then was, was drafted into the Army. Mm -hmm. Remember those days in 1965? Some of us do, anyway. Um, where he was trained as a soldier, became a sergeant, went overseas to Vietnam as a combat infantry squad leader. During this time, he was severely wounded in action and spent the next year and a half recovering in several military hospitals. Um, and thank you. Finally, in 68, he was honorably retired from the Army as permanently disabled, and he has a daughter, has a son, physical therapy, and then eventually was able to resume work as a freelance illustrator in 1969. Um, in 77, he and his family, his wife Barbara, two kids in the town of West Creek, New Jersey. Can you tell them from New York? I don't know where anything out of this area is. Okay, I know it's somewhere down south, Jersey, so from south of us. I haven't been to a garage sale yet. Over 40 years, Tom has illustrated books, magazines, newspaper articles, and covers, done more than 500 architectural renderings for both national and international companies. In 1990, once again, entered fine art exhibits, received many um, awards and recognition for his arts. He teaches painting and drawing, lectures and critiques on art. He gives how-to demonstrations on watercolor, drawing and gouache tempered painting. He's, he's still called upon to do illustrations. A signature member of the Philadelphia Watercolor Society, the Pennsylvania Watercolor Society, and the New Jersey Watercolor Society. A full member and past president of the Garden State Watercolor Society, plus a member and past president of the Pine Shores Art Association, where he's currently gallery director and board trustee. Mm -hmm. And he's currently teaching drawing at Rutgers University in New Brunswick, New Jersey. And while we were all busy talking about the club, Marion is announcing that he's agreed to do a um, watercolor workshop over at 1275, part of 1275, June 11th on Saturday from 10 to 4 p.m. Okay. So if you want more information on Marion, so boy, can we get hold of Tom. <laughs> <laughs> so without further ado, okay. Tom, thank you. <laughs> okay? Yes. Better now? You're on. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. I guess you can. Okay. Well, I'll start out with a uh, little tale, a little story. And we may have heard that. And it was, it's about the Wyeth family. We all know Andrew Wyeth. And when Andrew was very young, his father saw something in him. Now, he was an illustrator, his father, N.C. Wyatt. He's one of the great illustrators that uh, was produced in the United States. And he felt that his son was ready to learn, and he was going to teach him, tutor him. So the first day in the studio, here's Andrew sitting there as a young man, young boy, and his father is ready to go. So there were a lot of cabinets and things in N.C. Wyatt's studio. So he went over to one of the cabinets and how we're going to start, he opened the cabinet and he took out a skeleton. And there was a hook there in front of Andrew and he hung the skeleton on the hook and he said, draw that skeleton. And so he labored because N.C. Wyatt felt very strongly that you have to know how to draw. So he labored over that. Next day he came in, the father went to the cabinet, got the skeleton, hung it up on the hook. And that kept on happening for about two weeks, as the tale goes. And then 
one day he walked in, here was the young boy ready for his lesson, the father went over to the cabinet and he locked the cabinet and he pointed to the hook and he said, draw the skeleton. So he had to know and remember what he was doing. So that brings out a point that's important for you and I. You know what it is? The most important thing about all visual art, observation. That's what it is. So he had to really remember that so he could draw it. And the father kept teaching him that way. And we're going to talk about that as we go on, about observation. But we're going to work with something that's a little bit different than watercolor. Last time I was here, I did watercolor. This time, we're going to do what is called gouache. Now, gouache is, some people say, well, it's, is it like acrylic? It isn't. It's not like acrylic. Acrylic is acrylic. It turns, actually, to a plastic when it's dry. This doesn't. You can always re-wet this like watercolor. But it has the quality of being opaque. So we're going to start right in. I'm going to describe what it is as I do the work. So let's grab a brush. Let's get this one. A nice big filbert. And we'll get some color. And I use dishes, as we can see. And then this way uh, we have them for home later for having supper. <laughs> oh, but not really, because we got somebody mentioned to me, you gotta clean the dish off first. And you're right, because it really doesn't taste, if it smells not good, it even tastes worse. So let's see, we're gonna put some colors down. Now I'm putting down yellow ochre, white, which remember that's in watercolor, that's a bad word. I think yes. they have registered that uh, technically as a bad word uh, in watercolor. Although, don't tell anybody, but I know a lot of really top people that still use it anyway. But, um, and ultramarine blue and burnt umber. So we're gonna put all of these colors down and we're gonna start. Now, you notice I have ice cube trays here. When I did illustration, you know, I did so many different things that I would have, I wanted to save the paint. And it, you can reuse it, so I would mix it, a, amount of it in the uh, little container and I'd have it. And I would always, you have to keep it wet. Try to keep it as wet as you can. But even if it dries, you can use it again. Now I'm gonna do this surface. Let's start out with this surface right off the bat. There are three kinds of tempera. There's gouache tempera, which is what this is. Now you see I'm, I got the white. And the consistency you want, by the way, is that of, oh, here's what I'm following, by the way. I made a little color study, and I'm following that. So. We get some of the white, and the consistency you want is of not heavy cream, light cream. Keep it a light cream. That's what you want. So we're going to start putting that in, and it's going to move a little quick. So we're going to get the sunlight is coming from this way, so we're going to get that in like this. In other words, from this direction. So we'll get some of that in there, and we'll get some of this. A little bit of that, and some more white. And a little of this. Not too much. And then we're going to start putting some of that in there. Light's coming from this way. That's the one thing I needed. See, that's the, when, when you have to get a paper towel, that things are starting to dry. But that's okay. We can play around with that. We're going to keep using that. And we want to put a little blue in there. By the way, this particular brush, 
and I think I told you last time, so it's on the tape, you can check me out and make sure that it's true, is uh, with me from the beginning. Believe it or not. That looks better than I do, though. <laughs> anyway, it's been with me from the beginning. The consistency we talked about, but the thing that you have to remember with this is what they are, the tempera. There are three kinds, as I started to say before. There are three kinds of tempera. And something happened down here. I wanted to see if I could kind of zoom in a little bit on that. Okay. Just keep going and I'll... All right, sure. So we're going to get some of that in. Something happened down here. People have heard me say that before. Something happened, the guy bumped into something and got something on there. Okay. We'll zoom out. Oh, good. So, is that better? Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. So we'll get that. Now, take this one here. Now be careful, make sure it's dry when you do that, but I am doing a demo, so I have to make sure I get that out of there. Now, uh, there are three kinds. There's this, wash tempera. What is wash tempera and wash itself? It is actually an opaque watercolor. The same materials they use in watercolor is used for this, for gouache. In other words, they get these uh, minerals and they grind them up into powders. And then when they, they take those powders, that's how they make watercolor. Then they add gum arabic to it, and we get our watercolor. Well, with gouache, they add a, they don't grind it up so, fi uh, so fine, because watercolor is very fine. What they do with gouache is they make it a little more granular, right? So it has granules more, and it makes it better for opaque. Don't rip your paper like that if you are taking notes. Never rip your paper. That's not a good thing. So then, now we're going to go, and we're, now we're going to start moving through the dishes. Now we're going to get another one. So it's more granular, lays on the surface. That's why the colors are brighter than watercolor. Watercolor is fine, and it absorbs into the watercolor paper. This uh, lays more on the surface, so you have a lot of ref reflective quality. And you're and using what kind of paper? This is, uh, it's almost like a watercolor paper. It's an illustration board, but it's like a watercolor paper adhered to a, a board so that it's stiff. But you can use watercolor uh, paper. Now we'll get some, we gotta have some white on a separate dish. So here I go with the dishes. But that's, it's fun. Okay. Now, there's another kind of tempera, and that's egg tempera. And Wyeth, of course, made that famous. And naturally, we know what the thing he puts in that is, is in that is egg yolk. And I don't like to get involved with all the egg yolk and all that, so I stick with this. Uh, then there's a third, and that is casein. And casein is actually a derivative from milk. And so you, when you have the casein, uh, they, the reason they kind of developed that, some people didn't like the smell. Uh, so they developed a casein that smells a little nicer. They put a little perfume or something in there. But it still has the gum arabic and all just like watercolor. Same thing. So let's see, I'm getting nice and dark here. So you could guess where I'm heading with that paint. I'll bet you I'm going to the sky. I'll bet you. So let's see what happens. Don't mind the clanging of the dishes. Let's really get it in here. That's a little bit too timid. Let's get that sky in there. If the wash dries, so yes. does it reconstitute as well as like the Yes. Yes, it does. And then here's where you can make it a little more interesting. When you start putting it like this, you're, uh, 
you know, laying it in. But then, now I can go to the white. See, I can get, clean that off, and I could go over to the white. So you get some of that white. Get a little bit of water with it, not too much. A little bit. The white is a little different because I got a lot of stuff up here. So then I start going into that with that. Get a little bit of this. Tom, could you pull your board down? Yes. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that I'll happens. Take, I'll take the zoom off a little okay. bit. Okay. Okay, so then we start to get this day at the beach. No, at the lighthouse. So anyway, so uh, with the casein, that's another interesting way of painting with tempera. So tempera is a whole different kind of a way. It has the opaqueness. And I don't care if I go a little bit on that. I'm going to paint on there. Use a little more white. And we'll just keep coming down. And now we're going to jump over and look. We're going to put, oh, where'd that come from? That's, we're going to put a little bit of that um, sienna in there, burnt sienna. So we want a little of that. So we're going to try to think of what we're doing here. You know, how are, what do we want it to look like? I know many say, oh, I like going into it and not planning it. I just want to see if, <laughs> what happened. But I say you should try to plan it a little bit. You're going to have more success, and you'll see, you'll feel better about your work. So just a little bit of planning. How am I going to do it? What will I make it look like? You've got to know ahead of time. So make believe you're doing a demonstration for an organization. See? And then start putting in that color. Do you always work on dry paper like this? Pardon? Do you always work on dry paper? Most times, but if I do the other two. I work with the wet on wet too. But this one, I'm doing it this way because it lends itself to this medium better. You know, the um, gouache. Okay, so that, oops, should be that. So, Barb, don't blame me if you see paint on my face. <laughs> It just happened. It got right in my way. All right, so some people ask, do you always use tape? Not always. Sometimes. But you got to be careful with tape, because guess what happens? It rips up the paper, especially when you're going fast. OK, so. What kind of tape is that? This is supposed to be the tape that does not rip the surface. <laughs> but it, it did rip my surface right here. Yeah, it's supposed to be that kind of stuff. But it ripped my paper, so i got to write them a letter or something. I have a friend of mine, uh, uh, Tom Doyle. He's one of the guys who did the uh, Breck Girls, remember? The Brett girls, oh, the yeah. illustrations, yeah. and he does those. And uh, whenever something like that happens to him, he'll always say, well, I'm going to write them a letter. And he does. <laughs> I say it, he does. It. But that's what he does. He writes letters to everybody. So you might get a letter from him. No. Right now, he's down there and drawing down a portrait session. Down at Pine Shores. So we're gonna. This is gonna be the same uh, thing. This is. Uh, we're gonna. We're trying to make it. Give it a little bit of sunlight, but but we want to have some blue in there too. You know, somebody bumped into it with something and it put some blue on it. But if we can, put something in there. This is the sunlit side. But still, we want that. So now we're getting into, we have a sky, we're getting into the building now. My brushes. Usually when I work on a building, I use flats because they lend themselves to that. You should always use the shape of your brush to kind of help you. 
but this is round, so I'm going to stick with the round. And I don't see the round I need. But it's here. And then wait later until I start with this brush. We're going to talk about that. that I call it my tree brush. And I think I used it the last time I was here. I still have it. I have usually a really big round. Is it in front of your hand? This the one? other hand. No, that's that's kind of a no. I don't see it, so that's okay. I got one that's a little bit smaller. So um, now I'm going to start putting in some of the things that will help us with the to understand the shape that we're getting here. So we go in again. We're keeping it to that consistency. Remember what we said? We're going to keep it to light cream, not heavy cream, okay, otherwise you're going to wind up in trouble. And I thank you for such a, a kind reception. Okay, so we're getting, now we're trying to get that color. So we kind of have it now. Now I'm going to start moving it, and that's when the camera might have a problem, but it's good. Now we're good. I just have to keep moving it. When you put it down as wet, as it dries, is it, does it lose value or stay that way? It stays pretty good. It usually stays pretty good. So I'm gonna. I'm. What I'm putting my hand in is actually wet, but uh, I'm gonna do it anyway. Why do you prefer gouache to oil? Is it, is it the drying time? Yes. That is a good question. It's the drying time. Yeah. Although I do oils. So, if you see there's a print of an oil, I did. So we got a little shadow there. And if this is dry, we'll put a shadow there too. Now they should be similar in value. If it's on a white surface, and we could put a little Something happened, again, I say that a lot, I have a friend of mine that constantly says, oh, you're always saying something happened. You work where there's a lot of, you do things that a lot of people have accidents. Believe it or not, that happens. That's real life. People bump into stuff. And, and you put that in your work, and it'll be effective. Let's, well, it bled in but with the gouache, I can straighten it out. With the watercolor, I'd be starting to swear and <laughs> everything. But with this, I don't have to swear, because I'll just paint it in. So now, there's a lot of tape here. But I did this ahead of time, so it go a little quicker. And although it's not going quicker, but that was the, that was the point. So when I say plan, I mean it. See, I'm, I'm doing it, trying to do it myself. But it doesn't always work. Okay, so while I'm waiting for some of that to dry, I also use, and I did it for years as an illustrator, and still do it, um, ice cube trays. Whenever you make a painting, you have to think, I do, you think of three things, light, shade, shadow, and you have to mix all three of those, and you have to have that ready to go. And so I mixed, for the top part, because it's a little more delicate, um, those three shades. So I'll start laying in some of these. I just want to make sure I'm not messing up the equipment, the sound equipment. Oh, look what I did. But I can fix that. <laughs> you can actually fix that. I'll get this in. Now this is the part where Susanna says, oh, there he goes now. He's going to start really getting down. Really getting down tight to it. But the reason I'm being careful is because 
there's an awful lot of wet right here. And I know that's a surface that when some real watercolorists see that, they say, oh wow, that's when I want to start putting stuff in it. But the only thing I usually put in it is my finger. <laughs> so, because I'm trying to avoid that. So let's see, we'll get in some more color. Tom, with acrylic, you use a paper uh, palette that gets is disposable, and you prefer the with china. acrylics. Yeah, but you prefer using the china. Uh, well, this is not like acrylics. This is different. Yeah. Yeah, this is like watercolor. When I do my watercolors, I use china. Okay. You know, I use that all the time. Now, let me see this color. Uh, there was another question. I heard something. Like Seinfeld says, I heard something. Have we ever heard that? I make a lot of references to Seinfeld, so don't mind me. So you're really just laying it in, getting in the color, trying to get it right, get it to work. You're, you're worrying about this, what am I going to do here, what's going to happen there. But well, let's, let's address this now. I kept that white up there, okay? So, I go to my white, okay? and I'll have it a little thicker. Now, most of it bleeds through, but if it bleeds through, sometimes that's fun too. But then I'll just go over that. Couldn't you accomplish the same thing with acrylic that you do with the wash? Yes, but you cannot uh, re repaint that. In other words, I can't reconstitute it like he was saying, like uh, John was saying. You can't re-wet it. You can't do that. With this, I can wet that and probably, if I ran this under water, I could probably make most of this disappear. You can't do that with any of the other medium. This one I could, and I've done it. One time a guy came to visit me in my studio, and I, I had done a large um, painting of a, it was an illustration for an advertisement, and it was a parking lot, and with a big shopping center and all of that. So I. I was sitting there painting it, and we were getting it. It had to go to the studio to be shot to the, to the uh, <coughs> photographer. That's back in the day when they still used photographer for uh, reproduction. And the guy that was visiting me spilled a cup of coffee. By the way, this gives me an opportunity to show you when you're trying to blend something and even it's good in watercolor, use your brush in the opposite direction. Not too good for the hairs on the brush, but boy, it'll help you to blend better than to, even in your watercolors, than to go this way, go the opposite. So you're trying to blend two colors together, go the opposite. Opposite direction, that's a little hint. And that works. Otherwise, I'm out of business. It's got to work, right? Okay, so I keep winding up with this brush. See, some of them have a particular surface or point that I like, and some don't. Now, I could probably do this faster if I had my my. Uh, bridge, but I left it in the, in my bag, it's right there. My bridge is in my bag. So, that's a famous last word. He left his bridge in the bag. Did you want me to get an album there for you? Could you? She wishes my command. Oh, yes, yeah, she, that's my wife, by the way. 
It's some, actually some lady that followed me around. <laughs> nice. <laughs> no. Nice. Now you have to call with her. Yeah, that's right. Uh oh. I got myself in trouble. That's my bridge. That's been with me since the beginning, too. You know how when you oil paint, I know there might be some oil painters here, and you might use a mall, right? A mall stick that, what's his name, used to use rock oil, a lot of them. I use it myself. Well, I couldn't use it for watercolor and this kind of paint, so I said, well, what do I do? What can I do? So I came up with some idea. I got some shelving stuff. <laughs> and I cut it, and I put some cork on the bottom, and I have a bridge. And so what I do is, if I'm trying to get some nice straight edges, if I want straight edges, you don't have to. The hand edges look better anyway. But if I want to do it quickly, and then I want to use the bridge, so I put the bridge down on the work, and I get the color I want which is this color here. And then I put my thumb into that. You're, I'm holding this, but my thumb is in, the, in this. And then I drag it along. And so I gave myself, and then I just gave myself a mall, but for painting and tempera. And I can just finish that off. You so I can paint, do. You always paint flat like that? Yes. Well, no. That's not true. Um, because I did recently a demo where the people said, We have no table. If you don't have a table I can work on? No. So I had to work and make a watercolor vertical. And I know a lot of watercolorists do it, but. I had to do it in that one. And it wasn't easy, but I know once you get the hang of it, you can do it. It can be done. So do I do it? Yeah, sometimes I still do it now. I, I remember how that was, and I still will do it. So that I don't always work. That would be a lie. So see, I can straighten these edges or leave them messy. Tell them I didn't do that. Don't tell them I didn't want to do that. I didn't mean to do that. I know you all saw it. But... Okay. So let's keep on putting color in. As you can tell, it's a light out. He asked me that time if I use tape all the time. Somebody, somebody here. Usually I remember, but that one I forgot. But I do. Uh, if I am doing something where I want to keep that a clean line, I'll put uh, tape. If you see my hand shake, that left hand, you see it shake a lot. If I don't pay attention to it, it does shake. And that is the old war injury. I was severely injured uh, in that arm. And uh, as a matter of fact, I used to be a lefty. But I had to learn how to, but I could use both hands back then, but I had to really, learn. It took five years of total therapy to get that right. But anyway, I got it. I wasn't going to do it. I, when I was in the service, I was pretty well kind of, um, I guess, cynical after I got hurt. And because I couldn't draw anymore. And that hurt me because I was an illustrator before I went to service. I worked for Litton Industry. 
and a really big corporation. And I had a pretty good job, and I couldn't even draw. A hold, I couldn't hold the pencil. They gave me a ping pong ball to hold, and I couldn't. I couldn't grasp it. So I had lost all that coordination in both hands, actually. But the right one came back better. The left one, I still have problems. But, um, but then, so I got cynical, I guess. And then I had a friend of mine from Chicago who was a race car driver. And he kept encouraging me. And my wife kept saying when I was, I was married at that time too, to, to my wife, she went through all that with me. So. And uh, so with the encouragement from her and from this guy, Carl, this race car driver, I kept going until I was able to do it. So when you see the hand shake, that's that injury. And it does that. It just keeps on doing that. But that's okay. Let's take some of this look because it's, I don't like looking at it, All right? So it's, it's, just keep in mind with, with this that it is opaque watercolor. It's really a watercolor. That's what it is. It's watercolor. There is a good brush here. Someplace. Sometimes they hide, I think, on me. Did you ever have that happen? <laughs> yes. You're looking for a brush. It's hiding. Just do some of this. And get this down here. And look at this. Now I'm going to break from this for a second. I'm going to do some of the background. But I want you to just see. So see, you're just laying that color in. Just letting it. But there are things you can do with that. And I'll show you as I do this surface. You can kind of uh, play around with that surface like I did here to kind of give it something a little different, a little different feeling with it. Let me take a piece of tape. I'm going to be skipping around, so, but I'll keep telling you what I'm doing. I didn't want to take because I knew I wouldn't be able to see the end. I have the same trouble in my studio. So it happens. So here we go. This is going to go right over here. Now this is the little roof here. Okay, so we get the roof, we get a little... Oh, there it is. I found it. It was I. I found it. Good. That's a good thing. So now notice this was dry here. And so I was able to wet it again and it's coming back, see it? So we can, this is dry. So we can bring this stuff back and forth. Okay. What do we want to do? So there it is. So we'll take this and we have that edge. So let's Let's give that a little more strength. I don't care for that. Now, we, I usually go in the flow of the rain. The rain comes from up above, it comes down onto the roof, and it flows down, right, along the roof, down to the gutters. So when I do a roof, I do it always in that vertical, the, along that same slant. I'll get something interesting in there. And a little bit of blue. And we'll let that dry. That's the roof. Okay. See when you have the right brush, it goes right through. When you don't, you're struggling. 
And always work with good brushes. Get good stuff. Get, I know they cost a little more, but it's, you're better off. It's, it worked better, it moves better, everything about it is better. So do that with your work. And whenever you have a show, any of you as individuals, give me a call and I'll come down and I want to see your work. And when you do a demo, I want to see that demo. And I'll come. So we're starting to get part of that. Now, here I'm going to, let me get the underside of this first. Okay, so, I have water that's ready to go here. So we have the underside inside the lighthouse. Now, the perspective is important. I learned from a really great uh, teacher. His name was Lowenstein, and somebody I talked to today. He went to the school I went to, he did, and there was a guy named Lowenstein there, and this guy really knew how to do that stuff. And when I first came up to him and asked him to teach me, this was after class, I said, can you show me how to do that? And he said, you really want to know how to do perspective? He said, most kids are bored with that. I said, no, I want to know because I want to be an illustrator. I want to be the real thing. I was going there so I could make a, you know, make a living. I wanted to be, be one. And he showed me. He would take me after class and he showed me how to do it. I'm just going to go right over. And so I understood it. But then guess what happened? When the CAD system came out, and some of you know that system, right? When that CAD system came out, then it put a lot of guys like me out of work. Well, part of the work I did, you know, I was still doing, you know, some field and stream work and uh, all of those different magazines, that kind of stuff. But the any of the rendering work, the architectural stuff, that will dry right up because of the CAD system. But they called me, uh, the company with that, and said, Tom, can you show us how to do the perspective? Because they knew I was doing that. And I had done so many. And so I went down there, and so I was really putting the final nail in to my into my own thing because I showed them how to do it and they programmed that into the they paid me well the programmers but I worked with them and we got it in because when there are round things and square things on top of a roof and a tower sticking out how do you make that in perspective that's not easy and if you know how to do it it's easy but if you don't that's tough and they were getting lines going in places they didn't know. So that's why they called me and asked me, can you do that and help us with that? And I did, and that was it. It was all over. And I never got another job like that again. But Tom, what happens to the original artwork after they use it? Well. I think a lot of them take it and bring it home and hang it on their walls because, oh. I, because I know Charlie Waterhouse, and I used to have big discussions with him about this. He, was, he became my mentor, the, a person named Charlie Waterhouse. You can look him up. And uh, he, he was quite a, an illustrator. But I met him in school, and this answers your question. He would go to those places after he would do something like, say, for... Argosy magazine, and he would go to them and say, can I have the painting back? And they'd say, sure, we don't want it. We'll just throw it away. A lot of it wound up in dumpsters um, from some of the great illustrators. But um, he would ask, and they would say, sure, you want it? Yeah, we're going to only throw it away. I would go up, and they would say to me, because he told me, just ask them. So I would ask them. I'd say, can I have the painting I did, you know, for your magazine, and they would say, yeah, if you give us a thousand dollars, 
We'll give it to you. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, it's ours. We bought it. So many, many times it went in a dumpster. And that's the true story. They would just throw it away. Um, and I saw one, uh, there was a, one of my illustrations was online not too long ago. Oh. Somebody was selling it. They, apparently they got it from somebody and they were selling it. Uh, a design firm in New York, some big designer, was selling that piece. Um, and he, he called it, what did he call it? Retro, a retro painting of something. And because it was one of my older illustrations. Well, do you sign them when you do them? For yes. Some companies wouldn't let you. Back I'm then. just because yeah. if you sign, it's yours. Yeah. They work. Well, they wouldn't let you do that on many of them. Uh, they wouldn't let you. They, and so what I did was, I would put it in the trees upside down and stuff <laughs> like that. You hide it. Good. Yeah, I did. So I could say, yeah, that's mine. Go look, and you'll see. And that kind of spilled over to now in my paintings, I use the, um, I put a fingerprint, you know. Oh, what a good it. idea. Yeah. In all my paintings, you'll see there's a, the index finger is in the, in the painting. On purpose. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, I get plenty of uh, fingerprints in there, but that one's on purpose. So see, here we have a place where we can blend. So I can take this and go the opposite direction. See, the opposite direction when I paint. <coughs> and it gives you a better look than going this way. Tom, did you, I, did you produce a large sculpture at, was it Mountainside Hospital or someplace over there? I did it for National Newark and Essex Bank. I did a large 18 foot high sculpture back in 1970. They asked me to do a sculpture and I was the kind of a guy that if somebody walked in the office and said, can you do this? Absolutely. <laughs> I can do that. What do you want? A sculpture? Okay, I'll do that. Because hey, it was, you know, I was making more money. so. And so I got a lot of money, and there's a story with that one. At one time, after it was done, the sheriff, or no, the attorney general of Newark came into a place where I was, we, they were having a party uh, for the fact that the sculpture was completed. So we, they had a big thing at what they called the carriage trade in uh, over there where the sculpture was put in. And the, I'm, I'm sitting there at this, de at this table with all of these executives in these suits and I had this flared out red shirt. I had, this was 70 now. Of course. And I had uh, long hair and all of that. And so I'm sitting there, and this, this attorney general comes over to the table, and he says, is the person who did the sculpture at this table? I, I've seen the sculpture, is he at this table? And they said, yeah, they all pointed to me, and here I am with my blast out shirt, my striped pants, and bell bottoms, and uh, he goes, he reaches across the table to me, and he says, I have to shake your hand. He said, did you get paid? And I said, yes, I did. He said, well, I have to shake your hand, he said, because anybody who can get paid to do junk like that, he said, I have to shake his hand. I want to shake your hand. So, so I was pretty disappointed, and their, eye, their eyebrows, I was watching them go up on the president of the bank, you know, and uh, finally he says, I'm only kidding. He said, it's a good job, nice job, brings up the neighborhood, he said. And uh, it adds a little art to the neighborhood. And he said, uh, all your meals are on me. And so he paid for the whole party. So that was pretty nice of him.
He was a nice guy. What was the sculpture of? It, well, it was for a banking system, so I called it the banker. And uh, I know um, Susanna would have been proud of me because the, it was very uh, abstractly done. It's, it was almost like a Picasso, and it was just a large figure in the center. He was the banker, and above him was the industry, the uh, construction industry, and then business was uh, also above him but to the side, and that represented how they support uh, business and industry. So they, I got the job, and I even got paid. And I had to learn how to weld with that one, because you know it's 18 feet, cold rolled steel. That's what it was in. It's supposed to still be there. I know the last time I went it was there. It's on Evergreen Place in East Orange. Last time I went, it was still there. But I haven't been there in a while. That's a long haul from where I live. But I go up. You know, your artwork becomes like your children, right? Doesn't it? And you wonder if you sell it, I hope it's going into a good home. <laughs> That's what you say to yourself. And usually it is. against the grain. Okay, so we're starting to get what looks like a lighthouse, but I want to start, before I get into too much more detail, I want to start putting in some of these background things and the stuff in the foreground, because that's important. And I know we're, we ran out of time half hour a little bit. Well, let me take some of this. Now, how are we going to do? The sky is reflected into the water, right? Mm -hmm. We know that. But it's always a little what? It's more muted, but what else? Darker. A little darker. darker. That's good. Who said that? You get an A. Oh. Okay. So you want to put that in the water. So I have some water here. So I'm going to use the same colors I had. And I'm going to come right in if I can find out where the water is. Uh, here it is. There it is. So we'll take the water. We'll start putting some of this in. Some of this water. Try to do that. If you're doing water like this, try to do it fairly wet. You know, get it going pretty good. Get it in there. Keep it nice and wet. And then you're going to get the light part. And let some of that flow. To the front. And we'll add a little brown because as we come forward, it's starting to become more transparent. The water, right? So it goes around this rock and over that one. Around this one. This can actually come off here. Oh, don't do that. We're all holding our breath as you do that, you know. Yeah, I know. And it, I'm holding it more than you. I'm out of breath from all But it's true. It, but it, it ripped again, but that's okay, because that's where the stones are going. Give it some texture. Yes. So see, we make it work for us. Mm -hmm. 
And details, always remember the details will make it. I remember the uh, person who was the uh, mentor of, and a teacher of N.C. Wyatt. He said, the details are in the light. So some people, whenever I say that to a student, they say, does that mean there's no details in the shade? Well, to some extent, no. He, what he's basically saying is, don't do that. Don't put it in the light. I mean, in the, in the shade. Keep it in the light. It'll work better. It'll look better. So it's, it's a suggestion. You can put it where you want, but you know, he was recommending that the details should be in the light. Always in the light. Then we can quickly say there's a board here, and a board here, and a board here, and a board here, and that's. And we can do anything we want with that water because we can come back with the brush and just do what we want. I need some help. And so there's some waves that come kind of like this. And there's some green. I'm going to have green in it. Believe it or not, there's going to be green in this thing. But it's not here yet. But let's take a little green. And we're going to put it in the water because it's reflecting that. So we're going to put it here. There's some green in the water. So it's going to reflect what I have here. So that's our water behind the thing. Now let's get the tree brush. See, I almost forgot where I put it. Anyway, here's the tree brush. And somebody was asking me about this. They were saying, what do you do with that, with the trees and all of that? Well, let's look at it. Notice I'm tied to dishes. There must have been something when I was a kid. <laughs> I'm tied to these dishes. But anyway, uh, that's, but that's another story. I'm not telling that. But anyway, here we go. We have some trees in the background behind this. Lighthouse. This is the Lewis Bay Lighthouse in um, Hyannis, up in Cape Cod. So that's on Lewis Bay. I think it's privately owned now. Can't you use these laminated paper plates instead of the regular dishes? Well, I kind of like the dish. <laughs> It adds class, right? The what? It adds class. Yes, class. Well, that it could, but let's let's add white. Let's see what happens. The proverbial white—that's not white. To no, it, it the dishes for some reason the texture that it has the surface I like because I've used everything. And like I say, the ice cream trays, um, I did done many paintings where I used ice cream trays. Just ice cream trays. For all the work. I used to have them stacked on top of filing cabinets. And I'd just go and get the one I needed. So you can preserve the paint in yeah. the ice cream tray. I'm surprised you don't have white ice cream trays. No, I just, any so color. Yeah, that's color. true. You're right. Yeah. That's a good point. So now we have a, a tree brush, which is nothing more than a flat. I always tell everybody the story. They say, you should be selling those, Tom, <laughs> instead of telling everybody how it works. But I do it anyway. You have a flat. Now, when you're using a flat, you're going like this with a flat, right? That's the way you use a flat, right? But this, you work against it. 
So we're working in the opposite direction. You turn it on its corner, right, on the end, and then you use it in the opposite direction. And you keep on doing that enough, and it gets like that. <laughs> and then you go like this. And if you use a little more water, right, you can make it almost like watercolor, almost. But it is watercolor. Keep always that thing in mind. It is watercolor. This paint is actually watercolor, but just, it's the grind. It's how it's ground up. So they get some, like when they get, um, let's take a color. Um, I don't want to use that. I almost, I almost grabbed your newsletter, but I'm not going to use your newsletter. I'm going to use one of mine. Because now I don't need to use the tape. I'll just use this. And I'll get this all down in here. One lady came up to me once and said, um, I keep getting streaks in the sky with this stuff. I said, that's what you want to get in the sky, is streaks. That works. You know, it looks better that way than to make it the other way. She was trying to make it really smooth, but guess what? With, the, with this kind of paint, you can. You can really make it smooth if you want. So now, if we want to get into specific shape, uh, shapes, so I'll say I want that particular tree to look like an evergreen tree. So I get in there and I remember the shape of the tree and I start to put it in. See? And I can use that. Or if I want a deciduous, I do it the other way. Always working in, in, in. Always working in. Why? <coughs> Anybody know why? Because the plant grows out, all right? Comes from the trunk and goes out. When you're painting it, paint it in. And that's how you put, it'll come out better. Any of these things that I say, try it, you'll see. Just give it a shot, see what happens. We have to call you up and tell you you were right? Yeah, then <laughs> let me know, because that's what I want to hear, no. A lot of them call me up and say, Tom, you were wrong. One guy, Dennis Millar is his name, and he, he had a painting in the Philadelphia Watercolor Society show up in Reading, Pennsylvania. And he was an oil painter. And he had heard so many people said to him, you want to go and take a class with Tom and learn this wash. He said, nah, I don't I'm doing all right with my oil paint. Well, he decided he got enough people telling him he should go that he did. Oop, don't do that. But I'll figure it out. He got enough people telling him he decided to come. So one day he's sitting in the class, and I felt good to have him there. And he says to me, Tom, I want to tell you something. Lean close. So I leaned close to where he was working, and I said, what? And he said, I learned something today about Rush. And I said, what was it? And he says, I hate it. <laughs> so I said, oh, all right. So, the, so I said, oh, okay. So he, I said, well, let's give it a chance. So I gave him a little extra time, you know, worked with him, and we talked about it. And he has gone on. They're writing articles about him in Philadelphia and his work 
He's winning awards. Mm -hmm. He's now a, a member of the society he never even thought he'd get into. And so he's having a lot of fun with it and winning awards everywhere. The same shows I go into, he's winning awards, so I'm not happy. No, <laughs> it's good. When a student gets it, anybody who teaches, believe me, you, you, that's part of the, the enjoyment of it, to see somebody get it. Mm -hmm. You get the point, the no, understanding. I know. And I know we started late. Can I, can I just show you one thing? Can I, is there something that I can show? Let me show you one thing about the grasses up front. Um, an underrated color, although you may not feel that way, is raw sienna. Some people say, boy, I want to learn how to do those grasses and things, but I can't seem to get it. What am I doing wrong? Well. Try using raw sienna. It'll work for you. So let's see. We have the grass here. See, I have, my problem is, you know what my problem was? I wasn't looking at my skates. I forgot. <laughs> anyway, it's here. So if we get, I don't want, I want, can I cover this space? Do we have enough time? What, what we, if, do five minutes and then we can take a break. Oh, we're we going to take a going. break. Okay. Yeah. Is it all right when you guys take a break? That you keep working? That I keep working? Yes, okay. absolutely. All right. So it's break time. Oh. That's what oh. everybody said. Is that what you wanted? Or five minutes. No. Oh, in five minutes. Okay. So I'm going to get, in five minutes, we get to the cake that uh, Susanna brought because if I don't let anybody get to that cake, she's going to say, I went through all that trouble of bringing that cake and you. Blew right through it. So I don't want to offend Suzanne. And what are you That's using now? She's my good friend. Pardon? What are you using? This is mask. Oh. And it's another thing that they feel it's taboo. But anyway, it's something that I use in watercolors and wherever. If they make it in the art store, I usually buy it. And I try to use it. So I bought this. So now let me show you. I'm going to put in a couple things here just to get a couple of marks. Notice, now I know I've seen some people when they put the mask on, guess what happens? There's a ton of mask. That's not good. Not, don't put too much. Just a few marks. More effective if you use a few marks. Yes. How do you get that stuff out of the brush? I don't. I let, yeah. No, I I have a brush just for that. I don't want to. Now some people talk about the soap. You use you put soap on it and stuff. I don't know how that works, and I don't do that, and I don't put it in my paint. In my uh, water. What I do is, this is what I do with the brush that I use for the mask. I just go like that and put it right back there, because then I, then when I need it, it's ready. So uh, I have that started, so that after the break, I'll show you about these grasses. Because if you notice in the little color copy I have that I've made. I have the grasses down there. I want to show you how to do that because that's an art form in itself just to do that. But that's coming. So we have something to look forward to when we come back from our break in five more minutes. Or two minutes. No, there's no coming back. You have to just keep on going. You just oh, <laughs> I, well, I mean, when you come back. Are you coming back or are we finished? No, you have to keep on going because then we get our chores. Oh, okay. So don't stop. Just do what you just want to do. Going. I'm going to keep going. I will just keep right on going.
ですね All right, I am going to do that. I stopped talking all of a sudden. No, I'll keep right on talking. Because, boy, do I like it. Too. Well, I'm just putting in kind of the light feeling of the uh, background because that um, is not that important, but it's important as far as color. You know, they get some kind of muted color to kind of make these things stand out. Now what I am going to do is, I'm going to go into the, some of the finer details of this so that I can finish that up for you. And that, I'm, I'm going to use the bridge completely for that one. Into this. And here we go. Always checking because I want to make sure I don't smear something. <coughs> These are the railings. Constantly keep checking to make sure you're getting it right. Keep the perspective in mind, and there's kind of like a little thing here. change it around again. I'm probably taking it off camera all the time. No? no. no? Is it still working? Absolutely. Good. <coughs> now we're going to give it some, some light. This is what will give it the life. These are the, you know, doing the eve and you get into the dark part. And I know many times some people, some watercolors, do not make uh, too good of a sketch or a drawing and they just, just a couple of little lines and that's good. Uh, and that's good uh, for uh, working, but I like to have a little bit more, and I, I depend a little bit on planning, um, so that I know where I'm going. Maybe it's something way back in my head, I don't know what it is, but I have to plan it and get it going. The planning works for me, but that doesn't mean I don't appreciate what I see others do, where there's a little less of that and a little more of just relying on it. Just letting it happen. And I guess that comes from the illustrator days because if it, if it just looked like it happened and it wasn't that great, you didn't get paid. It was very simple. Okay. They said, you think we're going to put this in our magazine? We're not. So you're out. So 
So you had to be good. So maybe it came over from those days when that happened, when I did that. I know I keep flicking that pen, and I shouldn't. Now let's let's try to get this white a little. Don't look. When you see my hand uh, cover my brush, I'm not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to get that on your hand. But so make believe I didn't do that. And uh, uh, it'll be a nice, peaceful ride home <laughs> with my wife. But because um, she doesn't like when I use my hand. But she should see me in the studio. You would see when I've used my feet. Wow. That's, <laughs> that's really something. A little more on the, I just, there's a lot of detail up on this thing, but let me just put a little more in. Start having our coffee. So you just keep going. Okay. okay. May I? Okay. Would it be all right if I continue? Yep. Okay. I didn't know there were people in here. No. I knew there were you were here. I heard you. Uh oh. All right. Did you know Joe Rossi? Yes. Yeah. And I bet you knew Henry Gasser as well. I knew Gasser too. Yeah. Yep. They were connected with the New York School of Fine Arts. Yes. Ross was a very, very funny guy. Funny guy and a good artist. Yeah, yeah. He's still doing it. Is he really? Yep. Oh, he is. I saw him give demonstrations. He was really a live wire. Oh, yeah, he's something. And Gasser, he used to work standing up. Yes. Yep. Gasser did. Looks like a major But I'll easily fix it. Have you tried just uh, uh, drafting tape instead of that purple tape? Uh, yes, and if this this purple tape, we should see what the masking tape is. No, no, not I mean, drafting tape. Oh, I did not. That peels off easy. Oh, does it? Yeah, I, I, I well, use that's it. that's what I should have been using. Try it. Oh, yeah. Well, I will. Because masking tape, that takes off paper, but the yes. drafting tape works. Yeah. So this is gouache you're using? Yes. And when, when we start, when we go back, when we sit down again, I'll show you how we're going to use it down here, uh, the gouache. But it's gouache. And gouache is really opaque water. So we need all new colors in wash. Yes. We need a whole new palette of just wash. Yes. They have their own colors, you know, that they use as well. We're starting to get this. It's starting to make some sense, no? What do you think? Not yet? I, I I love this yeah, color. The sky. I love the color of the sky. You like that? Yeah. What color did you use? Never, those blues? I never tried it before. No? Just black and Yes. Black and wet. Yeah. That's what I love. Yeah. I never tried it. I tried it. 
this is um, the color I used here was um, ultramarine blue, or you could use the um, French ultramarine blue. That's also good. But see, you mix them together to get those colors. You see how you mix them? So it's a little more muted. And I use it for the stair and for the water. No, just by hand. By hand? Yeah. Oh my God. I'll do some now. Oh my God. Yeah, I'll show you. Yeah, show me. I will. <laughs> wow. Let me just get a little bit of this. This is the rule. Well, on the gouache, because I'm using the gouache. Oh, different. Yes. In other words, if I wasn't going to use the gouache, then you know, or you know, use some white or something, then I wouldn't use. I would do a watercolor. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it's different. So it's different. So it gives you a what different. What do you prefer? Well, actually, I prefer all of them uh, because I work in all mediums, uh, including oil and, and everything. So I enjoy just doing different things. You know, just whatever I feel would be interesting for that painting, and I do. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'll show you. But when you make, whenever you ma you're making lines like that, always make, don't make them really dark. Don't get it into the dark. It's not necessary. So let's say we're going to do a few. So we're going to do a few of these lines. Oh, I shake a little bit. Yes. It can be done. And you don't have to do every single one. No, no. You can just do so many so that you get the impression of the light hitting you. You know, the light and the shadow, it, it plays on that and it gives you the feeling that, you know, it's casting a shadow, the clapper. This happens to have clapper on this particular lighthouse. You know. Yeah, that's pencil. I can erase that. I don't want to erase it because I want to paint it. Yes, underneath the paint. So I keep it a little bit thin so I can see it. A little bit. Then I'll come into. I, I couldn't see those lines from the distance. So oh, yeah, I, yeah. Didn't know, oh, I didn't yeah. know there were lines on there. But yeah. yeah. Close the beautiful, yeah. more beautiful yeah. than. Yeah. Now, if I, take, if I take some of the white, and I'll show you something. Yes. If I take this white and I make it very watery, like this, then I can come along here and I can give it a feeling of reflection. I don't use any white. Mix. 
Uh, oh, you don't? No. Why? And not because I'm against it. I just don't no, exactly. have any need for it. Right. And, and I do um, use white in the watercolor sometimes. That's why they put the Chinese white in there. But I switch over and I use my black white. But I'll, if I made some mistake I don't like, I'll touch it. Yeah, that's awesome. I didn't see these lines in here. And even if, even if that's a no-no, I still believe that. Like, 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 Why am I putting those lines? They're like a washed out kind of a line to show that there's, it's glass inset and not, these are railings and you have to make a difference and that's, so, yes, so the, the white goes over this and down here and it shows through, back shows through. And it makes it look like it's glass. And then, in different other places, you'll do something else, like as an example. If you see this area, see that's, that's, that's a part of painting. When you see an area, like say this, and I say, well, there's like a weak point. This looks a little weak to me. So I come in and I say, well, something reflected off of here, and I'll get a color that's maybe a combination of these two. And I'll come over to this part of the, you know, this, this decorative part here, and then I'll go like this. And then I'll flower it up. Like some kind of something reflected off of there and cause that to light up. That's an important part of painting. If you want to make something that's interesting. And people don't think of it. Right? Yes. And yet, the more you start to add, the better it starts to look. Then, now, we're going to later do some grass, but uh, let me just show you. It's a little, yeah, it's hard. So now we're going to use, notice I didn't take any grass, any uh, uh, green out of the two. I mixed it. I mixed it. All of the greens are mixed. Okay? So I didn't use any green. This is not a green out of the tube. You're not going to find a tube that has that color. Because I just mixed it. So now I'm going to take this. Yes. Do you use uh, Chinese white or titanium white? Or uh, something else? I. I choose I don't use that anymore. Uh, I used to use the Chinese white. I use the wash. Wash makes a Chinese white. Well, a, a white. It's a, it's a permanent. So now here, I'm over here. And now I'm going to change up the green a little bit. And I'm going to actually put something back here. That kind of... Yeah, a little something a little different. That gives me a little different feel. But it has to relate. You have to make everything relate. So you have to get some of your other colors and you got to put them in there. It has to still relate. And even when you have a rip and a tear like that, you just go right over that rip and tear. Don't worry about the tear. They'll say, boy, he, this guy is a genius. He's made it three dimensional. When in reality, it's just a, a made a mistake. And we give it a direction. Always give your, when you're doing some grass like this, in the distance, give it a direction. So, a, a direction of like the land. This is a hill. 
right? So you're going to try to make that like, walk into the hill. I'm not looking at the, my picture, but it doesn't have it in there, but I'm putting it in. No, no. I did that. Why? Right there. That's plain air. Wow. Yes. Your grass should always kind of be in one direction. It looks better if it's going to be straight, to the right, to the left, because it's constantly changing because of wind and tide. The direction of the grass constantly changes. So sometimes in a, in a field of marshland, you see some grass is going this way and some is going this way. And so you should keep that, that look. It looks better. And it's what reality, what really happens. It's closer to reality. Pardon? I haven't been following it back a little I know the scene I've been, been there. Yes. To eat them? Yes. I'm going to do that now. Should I start that now? What? This is the edge of the where the water meets the land. And so there's some rocks over there and some sticks. I know what's there, even though it may not be in my picture. I know what actually. Can I just give him a little preview? Oh, so he can. Yeah, that's right. Okay. All right, let's do that, Chris. Now, remember what we mixed. I mean, what I put down on the on the dish. I put ochre and I put raw sienna. Have you ever heard of raw sienna? I love it. Yeah. It's a good color. And a little tiny bit of blue. So, Okay, so we get it nice and loose. Well, I don't have any, so I don't worry. Oh. Alright, so here we go. We're going to get some of these grasses in. Now, we're going to follow in that direction, like I said. We're going to use that direction. We're going to start putting it, and then we're going to try not to make too much of this, because that becomes what? That becomes bushes and stuff like that. So we're going to keep it in a movement like this. So we're always going to be kind of going like this. Now, once in a while, grass will change it. Not too long. Where is that? Now this. I'm looking for the Now what? No, the blue. Now what are all this? I'm from Burnt You don't want to turn it too green. So add a little white. I'm going to come down here and we're starting to put this in.
Trying to give it a glow. I feel there's like a glow behind it. And I always like to get one spot where it's good and dark. I have one little spot where I do that. And it kind of goes up and it follows the As if somebody was walking now, when I start to, oops, something fell off of me. What was it? Oh, yeah, that's on the top. I don't know what that's for. Let me put it in my car. <laughs> what kind of brush are you using now? This was a flat, which I ruined. It's perfect for that. It's a, it's a flat brush that I ruined. In other words, in other words I used it against the gas until it... Or they get that way. It is, do they usually have stiff bristles or soft? It's um, like, a like this, like a sable. Almost like a sable. Yeah. And I'm going to keep on going with it. Oh, yeah. You know, Joe Rose, he must be in his 90s now. Yeah, he's pretty old. Yeah. But this Don't say wife, that. Yeah, pretty old guy. I well, I'm, I'm pretty old, so, you know, I, I say that much. My wife says, you're not old. And I said, well, tell that to the guy in the mirror. Because he looks pretty old. He's probably older than you are. I love old. <laughs> but it's fun. Right? It's still here. But that's pretty tricky, putting your paints on top of your artwork, right? Yeah, you got to be careful. Because <laughs> <laughs> boy, can you put a problem. 
I try to vary. Okay, I got a pizza. <laughs> and then we're going to get the same color back in here. Not as much. So who's having a show? If there were. Yeah. I have a show now. You do? Where? Rosalie and Library. I do court, I've been doing portrait sculptures. Oh, sculptures? Yeah. And I'm accurate. When I do a portrait, there's no question who it is. Who it is? Yeah, yeah the whiteness is the hard part. Yeah, well, that's... 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 that's that if you look at it and you don't really know the sitter, you can't appreciate it. You know right. I mean? It's just a face. But if you Google terracotta portraits on this play, you can see some of them. I tried to sell the whole collection, but I don't get a nibble. Not a nibble. <laughs> Not a nibble. You know what they tell me? If I'm 80, I'll be 81 years old in about 10 days, and I'm told I'm an emerging artist. I have, I have no track record of sales, so they don't want to talk to me. Yeah, that, it, it's just unfortunate, but that's true. I'm already telling my daughters if I keep the bucket, what to do. <laughs> maybe, maybe they'll get, if they give it to uh, museums, they'll get a, a tax write off. You know? That's it, and they will. Now, I'll take, and now where they say to me, well, Tom, you paid every single grant grant. I don't, but I do it kind of like this. And then I come in and I put some that are more, um, they look. More plausible. It looks more oh, like, yes. a, like real gray. So I'll put some of that in. A couple of some here and so I'm, it's really. What are we doing? We're really uh, kind of we're like safety, as they say. So, and be careful of going like this, like this, because it looks like a bunch of people following you. You know, I was looking at that painting you made of the shoveling of those lobsters. A lot of detail, but that was taking quite some time. It took me, if, if I try to figure out the amount of time it took me, I would say it took me about, on that particular painting, about five days. Yeah, that's a piece of work. Yeah. That's a piece of work. I even saw a little branch on the left. Yeah. And I noticed these things. Now, that has, believe it or not, that has gouache on it. It's a good piece of work. It's very right tiny. So you see how it starts to come out. And had I had the, the stone in here, and the stone is really very simple to do. It's just a real quick thing, like I kind of did this. By the way, let me, I see that. Yes. There's a problem. Let me, fix, let me fix that problem. How many colors do you have in your gouache palette? I usually try to keep to about five colors in the total. Because all my greens are painted from the... Uh, right, it's from the uh, yellow and the blue. And uh, all of my... Uh, I just, let me kind of get just a little bit here. This I need. See, it has a magic. Uh, but I try to limit the amount. The palette is important if you can learn it. I think it should. I would recommend that if you're working on a palette, limit it. Don't make it everything. Now we can get up here. Let's say we go up here. Oh, is that dry for you to put your hand on it? Not really, but I'm doing it. Yeah, look at that spine on the face. Yeah, well now he's concentrating. But he can just 
Sometimes just doing it like that, it gives it an old look. That's what you want. You don't want to do it all perfect. That's not good. Well, if you do it, don't be offended. If I say it's not good. And then sometimes people actually want to do that. They really do that. So sometimes you'll have a scratch on the, on the surface where somebody banged into it and bumped something on it. So that gives it realism. <laughs> Everybody says, wow. That is so good. And now let's take some of this one. There's the map. Yeah, I didn't. Take the mask. It's a, it's a rubber cement picker up. And so you Yeah, I put a little mask in I hope this is dry. If it's not dry, I'll well, put that on. I got most of the armor here.